Governor Gavin Newsom just had a really bad week. He was humiliated, backed into a corner, folded on a key policy issue, and his presidential ambitions may now be up in smoke. Coming up, we'll tell you what happened and how we're going to keep the pressure on. I'm Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California, and longtime listeners and viewers of this show know that I am no fan of Governor Gavin Newsom. He's arrogant, he's ignorant, and he's corrupt. And that's just uh, the starting point on all of his failings. Governor Gavin Newsom is out there running for president, but also running our state into the ground. Of course, liberal media outlets in California have given him a complete pass. There has been no real uh, uh, scrutiny, no accountability, no truth telling on his failures. But now we see that he had a really bad week and it shows that some of the problems that he has created, they're coming home to roost. And how he's dealing with the blowback demonstrates that he's not a very strong leader. He's not well respected and his presidential campaign ambitions, well, they may now be completely a thing of the past. Let me tell you what happened. First, the past week started out with something quite remarkable. Um, Governor Sununu from New Hampshire is a moderate Republican, uh, soft-spoken, polite. He, he's very similar to the George Bush family of go along, get along, uh, the niceties, the political ruling class. They go to each, you know, Democrats and Republicans going to each other, cock, each other's cocktail parties. Um, so he's a very, uh, you know, um, uh, um, you know, considerate person. Well, did you hear what he had to say about Gavin Newsom? He was at a forum and he was asked because uh, he was the, um, um, uh, the National Governors Association chair. Um, he was asked about how the governors from different political parties, how they get along. And he said, well, we all really get along quite well, except for two, two governors, which everyone, everyone uh, uh, dislike. Uh, of course, one of those was Golden Boy um, Gavin. Uh, here's the uh, the interview uh, at the Ronald Reagan Institute. CEOs, governors have to deliver. So how can governors play a bigger role in leading us out? Yeah, again, a lead by example. And I think, look, almost all the governors get along. I mean, uh, in, in my eight years, I can honestly tell you there's really only been two, maybe a third, but two real governors that really nobody liked. Nobody cared for it at all. <laughs> uh, I don't mind. Would you that. say who they are? <laughs> you really want me to? <laughs> yeah. Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> okay. Complete jackass. No one likes him. Um, and I got and, and I got to be honest. I, and no, no one cares for Gavin. Gavin's just a prick. Excuse me. <laughs> he just is. He, it's really disappointing. I got along with him. All of us got along for a while. But even the Democrats, they won't tell you out loud. But behind closed doors, they're like, oh, God, look who's coming. You know, they all roll their eyes. Oh, I love it. Ew. You know, look, I'm not surprised because Newsom is so arrogant. And, and, and what's offensive about this is I don't mind smart people who have an ego. A certain presidential candidate has a big ego, but he's earned it. But when you have someone like Gavin Newsom, who has not earned a damn thing in his entire life, he's been given everything. It's Everything has always been handed to him on a silver plat platter. Golden boy Gavin. Born on third base, he thought he hit a triple. His aunt Nancy Pelosi has opened up every door. The Getty families from, you know, very wealthy families. Every single political position that he has gotten, he's never earned. It's always been anointed. It's always been gifted to him. And the media, they've never given him any tough critical review. And so his uh, tenure in office has always been fluff. Fantasy over substance. And he thinks that he's all that. He thinks, oh, I, of course I can be president. I, I can be president. Look how well I did in California. Nobody thinks you've done well. No one who's actually paying attention, who knows the truth, thinks Newsom has done anything but destroy a once good state. He's had some help, obviously, from some of his liberal um, colleagues in the Democrat Party. But man, he's taken it to a whole new depth. So the truth is that 
even Democrats across the country don't like Gavin. And that does not bode well for the anointing process that everyone thinks is happening in the Democrat Party, where they're going to show Joe Biden the do door. And this is what I predict is going to happen. Joe Biden is not going to be the nominee. Uh, if he is the nominee, Democrat political consultants, you ought to all basically resign because you all you know, did it to yourselves. Um, but I believe that Newsom has been on track to be anointed as the, the candidate. But as he starts having problems here in California, that's going to cause people to reconsider, even in the internal uh, back rooms of the Democrat Party. And it's clear that a lot of those super delegates who are polit politicians, because Democrats in, in their nominating convention, they, they give super delegates to elected officials on the Democrat side. Um, so a lot of those delegates are super delegates or political, uh, politically connected officials. And if they're starting to say, well, we don't really like this guy, means that in a, in a convention where delegates are released and can vote for whoever they want, it may present a problem for Gavin Newsom. Another reason why Newsom is having a problem, well, um, he's being attacked by some powerful forces in the Democrat Party. Here's this. California Teachers Union pays for attack ad on Governor Gavin Newsom. Well, this is pretty interesting. It's sort of like uh, man bites dog. The, the teachers union's always been in Newsom's court. In fact, the teachers union spent millions of dollars in 2021 helping Gavin Newsom defeat the recall. These uh, the teachers union um, uh, coffers, the, all their pol political coffers are used to support and protect Democrat politicians. But in the, the budget crisis that Newsom has created, more on that in just a minute, uh, Newsom was looking at reducing spending on education. And of course, the teachers union, they don't care about the kids. They care about their salary hikes and pension spikes. It's all about the money, honey their contracts, their union contracts. So they actually funded an ad over the past week going into Memorial Day weekend, blasting Governor Gavin Newsom. Here's the story from CBS Sacramento. Thousands of teachers laid off. First though, political friends turned foes, the California Teachers Union paying for that ad attacking Governor Gavin Newsom. Thanks for joining us here at six o'clock. I'm Hunter Sowards. And tonight's Politics at Large, Steve is live for us at the state capitol with the money trail between the powerful labor union and the governor, Steve. Yeah, this is not familiar territory for the governor, who up until now has gotten a lot of support from the Teachers Association. In this TV ad, though, the teachers union saying that they're giving the governor's school budget cuts a failing grade. I kind of think this is a jellyfish. Second grade public school student Bowman Trimble beaming over his book fair find. It and says it's glow in the dark too. Mom, proud of her star student, just as summer break begins. I think he just learned a lot and he's really developing as a person. Math class is still very much in session at the state capitol, where new numbers from the budget deficit are leading to school spending cuts. This is a sizable deficit. Now, Governor Gavin Newsom is under attack in a bold new TV ad. California classrooms face a monumental crisis. The ad, paid for by the California Teachers Association, blasts the governor, warning against bigger class sizes and thousands of teacher layoffs. Tell lawmakers and Governor Newsom to pass a state budget that protects public schools for our students and communities. The ad comes just after the teachers union contributed $250,000 to Newsom's Yes on Prop 1 committee in February. It also contributed $1.8 million to Newsom's anti-recall campaign in 2022. They obviously are very upset because they would hope that somebody they had spent a lot of money on would be better on their issues. Lance Christensen is vice president of education. So uh, basically Newsom in unfamiliar territory, a powerful Democrat group that has shielded him and coddled him and protected him. Suddenly they're like, wait, you're not giving us everything we demand? How dare you? And again, this is how the politics, the broken political system in California works or doesn't work. Powerful special interests don't care about kids. They'll use kids to, as a battering ram to make sure that they get their salary hikes and pension spikes. You have to say it that way because that's what the union boss sounds like when they go into labor negotiations. Um, the 
the reality is Newsom is an unfamiliar territory and he's having a whole, just a whole uh, hard time dealing with it. He's weeping in the middle of, a, of the night. Why don't they like me? They said something naughty about me. They said something unkind. They're making fun of me, mommy. Um, so he is, it, it only took a week. It only took a week, a week of ads over a, a holiday weekend, by the way. Which is, you know, a flash in the pan when it comes to ads. There's no real coverage or 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 or, or, or a frequency that the ad's going to get. Just a couple ads running over a few days. Boom, comes this story. Gavin Newsom and Teachers Union resolve their budget beef. Okay, let me let me just say that the headline should say, Newsom caves in. Newsom says to teachers union, how high do you want me to jump? Don't even ask me to jump, just how high. He is their bitch. That's right. There's no better way to, to describe it. He is bought and sold by them. And the ad was just simply a, hey, what do you think you're doing? You belong to us. We've bought you. We own you. You do what we tell you to do. Or we're going to smack you around a little bit. And he's like, oh, don't criticize me. And immediately he caves in. And you know, again, none of this is about the kids, okay? Because we are spending record sums of money on education. And a lot of it is wasted in California. The schools are failing our kids. And it's not a problem of money. It's a problem of accountability. This was all about positions, salary hikes, and pension spikes. Make no mistake about it. So Newsom basically sprinkled a little budget fairy dust and said, oh, you know, those cuts that we were going to uh, make. Yeah, th don't worry about it. They're gone. We're going to raid reserves. We're going to raid reserves. Well, there's not a whole lot of reserves less left. Uh, the LAO, and this is another reason why Newsom had a bad week. The legislative analyst office said Newsom's budget is using Enron style accounting. It is wildly off. There's still a budget deficit. He's not closed it. Now, this is before he reversed the reductions in education. So the LAO said that the budget's going to be at least $7 billion short. When you, re 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 you know, reverse those uh, education uh, reductions, you're going to have uh, tens of billions of dollars. And by the way, these numbers I don't even agree with. I think it's much higher than the $7 billion. But remember, the LAO is also a government agency that reports to the legislature. So they're also trying to soften things up. Anyway, what they say is that the $73 billion deficit that Newsom admitted to at the beginning of the budget process back in January is actually uh, still there, $7 billion short. Again, it's probably in the tens of, uh, uh, of billions of dollars with the uh, uh, cave into the, the teachers union. Uh, let me point this out, though. Newsom's May budget revise uh, tries to balance by proposing 15.2 billion in cuts. Now, that's actually not real cuts. Uh, it's a reduction in the rate of spending on education, okay, of the rate of increase of spending. He also eliminates vacant positions in the state budget. How is that a cut when the position wasn't even like filled in the first place? I don't consider that to be a cut because no one was actually in that position. You weren't actually doing any work, although some would argue a lot of the positions that are filled don't have a whole lot of people doing work in state government. Um, so a lot of the cuts are actually not real cuts. Um, there's a lot of things that he could be cutting that he hasn't done. Like he hasn't gotten rid of the um, free welfare uh, and uh, free health care at taxpayer expense for migrants here illegally. Um, he raids $4.2 billion in reserves, which now is going to be higher with this cave into the education lobby. $14.8 in uh, pausing the expansion of programs. Borrowing 7.5 billion. So you see what I'm saying. He's not making real decisions with this budget. It's all papered over. And even the legislative analyst office says he's not done yet. He's not done the job. So as we go into these last few weeks of the budget process, the state governor and uh, legislature have to approve a budget by June 15th. We still have a major budget deficit. And even after they pass their phony budget and get blessed by the LAO, oh, yes, it balances. 
We're still going to be wasting money, billions of dollars in so many ways. We're still going to see you, the taxpayer, put on the chopping block in terms of less services and more taxes. And um, you're also going to see the can kick down the road and the problem's going to get worse. Next year's budget is going to be dramatically worse than even what we're seeing today because your state representatives and our governor refuse to admit that they've created this problem. They don't want to actually fix the problem. They're hoping that there's going to be some windfall down the line, some bailout, or they're hoping that they can con voters this November into approving tax increases, including two ballot measures to gut Prop 13. You know damn well that that's where this is going. And even the LAO knows, because in this story, the Los Angeles, the, the legislative analyst says, that, quote, the state's fiscal condition faces uncertainties. This includes, for example, tax proposals that have interactions, interactions with measures potentially appearing on the November ballot. These proposals specifically could present downside pressure on the budget picture. Let me just translate this. We got tax increases on the budget, uh, on the, on the ballot in November. They may not pass. And in fact, a tax reform measure might pass that would undo a lot of expensive, costly tax hikes. And that's going to really cause us to shit the sheets in the budget. Would you like that translation? Because that's really what they should be saying. Instead of could present downside pressure on the budget picture. Would you please speak a little English? So they're talking about the California Taxpayer Protection Initiative. It's an initiative that we back at Reform California to roll back tax increases, costly and unfair tax increases that the governor and the legislature have approved, illegal fees that they've imposed on us, including a new fee that would charge you more for your electricity based upon you earning too much money in your household income. Just absolute theft. At Reform California, we're fighting to not only balance the budget responsibly, but to actually reduce the tax burden on you. Because with higher taxes, we're only seeing more people leave the state, which what, what that results in is less revenue and a bigger budget deficit. This is a death spiral that the state is in. If we want responsible budgeting practices, if we want to fix our fiscal crisis and save the services that are important, cut the wasteful spending, and Make California more affordable for you to continue to live here. We need to do everything to pass the Taxpayer Protection Initiative in the November election, as well as elect better state legislators. In fact, in this November election, we could actually break the Democrats' supermajority in the state assembly. There are 12 seats that we can absolutely win. We only need to win nine additional seats to break the supermajority that Democrats currently have. That would create a check on their extremism. So go onto the website, reformcalifornia.org, and do three things. Number one, sign up to get our voter guide. You can do that at the bottom of the site right here. First name, last name, emails, phone number, and zip code. And that means that you'll get our free voter guide with a plain English description of all the ballot measures this November, so you know what you're voting on, plus all of our endorsements for school board races all the way up to the congressional races, the state legislative races. Um, get that voter guide. Second, sign up as a volunteer. Please be part of the fight. Uh, you can volunteer to make phone calls from home, stuff envelopes at home, uh, walk your neighborhood. We'll give you the door hangers and all the materials. But please get involved in the fight. Just a few hours this, this November uh, leading up to the November election can be quite impactful in your area. And finally, contribute. Help us continue to bring the shows like this to you every day at five o'clock contribute online at reformcalifornia.org. By the way, you can continue to get this show every day by subscribing. Smash that subscription button, hit the notification button. 84% of you watching these podcasts each day are not subscribers. By subscribing, you'll get notified when a new episode appears every day at five o'clock and you will help us grow the movement. It's an easy, free way for you to help us get this podcast out to more people with more subscribers, the algorithm puts our podcast in better positioning to potential voters out there. So help us get the word out, breaking through the censorship of the liberal media.
Until next time, Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website reformcalifornia.org for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.